is such a lovely Saturday today. So we're just sitting outside enjoying the garden and I thought I would just show you what's happening out here. Not an awful lot, but um, spring has started and things are starting to grow. So I'll just give you a little tour of the garden. I've got the herb bed here. Um, I've put loads of seeds in, all different things. I can't even remember what I've put in there, but there's still a few things left over from last year. Plus a few stinging nettles, which Scarlett's been using to make stinging nettle tea, so I've left those ones there. We've got some sage, um, rosemary, lemon balm, mint, thyme, uh, and a few chives left in there. Got some chamomile in that pot to make chamomile tea. More lemon balm has self seeded over there, so I'm leaving that. Got our rhubarb growing over here. Over here, we've got lots of Lavender, which will be flowering soon, but it still smells absolutely lovely, even though it hasn't got any flowers yet. Lots of granny's bonnets, hollyhocks, uh, is it hollyhock? Yeah, hollyhocks starting to grow, and the rose bushes are starting to get really huge. Um, they haven't got any buds on yet, but I'm sure there'll be loads of roses on there. The peony has started to get some buds. The grapevine is starting to get some leaves and I'm hoping to train that to grow over the chicken run so that they get some shade. And we've got this fig tree here, which also I might train over as well if it gets big enough. And we have an elder tree over there. In, in the coop, we have got a couple of broody hens. Oh, I don't know if you can see them, it's quite dark. They're huge and they are sitting on some eggs that I bought. Because we haven't got any cockerels, so I had to buy some fertile eggs and they're sitting on there. And in a couple of weeks we'll see if we get some chicks. Be great if we did. It's bed. I sowed loads of seeds, but they were quite old, and I don't think they are going to do anything, <laughs> which is a shame. So I'm going to have to plant something else in there. Our apple tree is blossoming and getting slightly taller, but not much. Over here, we've got some heritage kale, which can be picked all year round. So um, that's looking lovely. I love the colour of that. Um, and then we've got a blueberry bush, some um, raspberry canes, yeah. and yeah, um, a blackcurrant bush as well. And uh, we built this frame and put some netting over it to keep the birds off that this year so that we can actually have some fruit. <laughs> then we've got our cherry tree over here. I'm wondering if we should put some netting around some of that as well so that we actually get to have some of the cherries. Here's the greenhouse, it's a bit of a mess at the moment. But uh, yeah, I haven't done too much in here this year so far. Um, we've just got some um, tomato seeds that I've sown, peppers, um, melons, lettuce, chilies, um, lots of sunflowers. Um, that's it, it's just been lovely to spend some time outside and enjoying this lovely weather. Henry's drawing. Ooh. What are you drawing? Just drawing um, the thing for my game that I'm going to make. You're designing a game aren't you? Yep. And what's this one called? Is this a character? Yeah, this is the evil one. He's in a house and it's called Victorian Manor. And Henry has been working on this game for a few weeks now, um, just drawing constantly, and he's getting really, really good. You have got a little cut on your nose, haven't you? What happened? Oh, the chickens bit it. Chickens pecked your nose this morning, yeah. didn't they? <laughs> when you were trying to stroke one. Yeah. So this is your little kitchen that you've got going on? Yeah, got my spatula. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean you got a cut on your nose, Scarlett. By the chickens. Mm. Oh, it does really hurt. I'm really happy today, Mum. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, I think for making baked bacon is a really good hobby.
as you just saw, I got um, some basil from a supermarket, a little pot from the supermarket of basil that you just get for cooking. And I just um, pulled each plant out separately and then put them in bigger pots. So I put three or four in each pot and I managed to share them out between um, eight different pots so they will grow nice and big and hopefully I'll have lots of basil um, to last throughout the year because I will freeze some and um, make some tomato sauce with some as well um, and yeah just all I had to buy was one little pot from the supermarket and it's really nice to see the greenhouse actually coming to life again now because it's been so dormant for ages so it's good to have some greenery in here. people have been asking me about William's kidneys um, because for those of you that are new when uh, I was pregnant with William um, on one of the scans they said that his kidneys were enlarged um, and yeah so I'll just tell you what's been going on since then so and that is also one of the reasons why I was induced um, and had him a little bit early because they weren't sure whether the kidneys were going to cause him problems and stuff like that. So, anyway, <laughs> since he's been born, uh, I think from practically the first day he was born, they, the doctors told me to uh, put him on antibiotics. So he was taking antibiotics for his kidneys for a couple of weeks, I think it was, but his food just went straight through him and he was losing weight. He was really underweight. He was under the first, like he was off the chart with um, he, the weight that he was. He was under the first centile. So um, I just thought, well, that must be because of the antibiotics because none of my other babies have had problems like that. So um, I decided to stop him having the antibiotics because I didn't even know what the reason was for him to take them. I was never given a reason, <coughs> even though I'd asked. Um, they just said, you know, it's for his kidneys, but they couldn't tell me what was wrong with his kidneys. So yeah, I took that decision to uh, stop his antibiotics against the doctor's advice. And thankfully that worked. He uh, quickly started to gain weight and uh, yeah, he never showed any signs of having any problems with his kidneys. He never had any urine infection. He never had a kidney infection. Um, he's, he was never in pain, no pain that I could tell he was in. You know, he didn't show any signs of having any pain. So I felt like it was the right decision to take him off the antibiotics 
and I did have the doctor's surgery keep ringing me and telling me that I should be putting him back on the antibiotics, but they wouldn't tell me why. I mean, I just thought it was ridiculous. Having a child on continuously on antibiotics for years, that's what they wanted me to do. They wanted me to just keep him on the antibiotics for years and years and years. Um, but with no real reason other than, oh, it's, it, it's a preventative measure. It's just in case he gets an infection. Well, I just thought that was ridiculous because the whole time he would have been on the antibiotics, his immune system would be being weakened. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, the doctors, they kept ringing me. They kept saying, you need to be putting him back on the antibiotics. And I kept saying, I'm not going to because last time he lost a lot of weight but they weren't listening, so I just ignored them. Anyway, the last time we went to the hospital, because he's been going to the hospital regularly for kidney scans, I think once every couple of months. Yes, he's almost seven months old now. And the last time he went was when he was six months old, uh, when he was just turned six months old. And they said that his kidneys were still uh, slightly enlarged but and this was a really nice consultant that I saw this time so she agreed with me that I did the right thing taking him off the antibiotics and that there was absolutely no need for him to be on the antibiotics yeah um what was I saying <laughs> what was I saying Yes, and because his kidneys hadn't increased in size, they had actually become less enlarged, um, she discharged us, so we no longer have to go back to the hospital. And yeah, no one knows why his kidneys were enlarged or are maybe still slightly enlarged, but that's just the way he is. And it hasn't caused him any problems. Like I said, he's never been ill. The only time he was slightly ill was when he had COVID and it, that was just a mild cold. And the rest of the time he's been absolutely fine. Fit as a fiddle, no pain, nothing. So that's where we are with the whole kidney thing. So it's all worked out fine. And I just think the doctors were trying to do a bit of scaremongering, but yeah, it was all good. Apparently it's quite common for babies to have this condition um, where, where the kidneys are enlarged. So if you have a scan and they say that your baby has enlarged kidneys, don't panic. It's very, very common. And um, a lot of babies, um, their kidneys would have gone back to the normal size, the average size, by the time they're born. If not, <coughs> yeah. <laughs> if not, then they would have gone usually back to the average size, yes, within the first year of their life. And it shouldn't really cause any issues. So there you go. Don't listen to all the scaremongering. I think that's the takeaway from this little journey that we've been on. Oh, yeah, yes.